Without further ado, we're going to ask from uh, Rabbi Shmuel Marcus, the Rav of uh, Congregation Yisrael, so to say words of Chizak. Rabbi Shmuel Marcus, please. Shalos Rabbanim. Yitzchak Rosman, famed Rav of Migdal HaEmek in Eretz Yisrael, once related that he was approached by four young Israeli men interested in becoming a little bit more religious. And when he inquired as to what sparked this interest, they told him the following story. They were pilots in the Israeli Air Force. It was 1982. They were asked to fly what was termed a suicide mission into Lebanon, attacking some anti-aircraft missile sites. And they were approached because they were not married. They had no families. They were asked to volunteer for the sake of their country, to put their lives in grave, grave danger. And they agreed on condition that they be allowed to seek a bracha from a tzaddik beforehand. They approached the Spike Lagone, who was at the, end, the very end of his life, Shol Yankov Kanievsky. He asked them when their mission is scheduled for this home tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock. He took their hands in his. He wished them each, Seisham Lashalom, Boacham Lashalom. And the next morning in Bnei Brak, in every yeshiva, there was a sign, a kolkori signed by the Stark Lagone, which read, Ace Tsarahili Yaakov. At 10.55, every Talmud is asked to put down his Gemara and say Tehillim. And these four pilots told of Grossman, that is why they are now interested in becoming a little bit more religious. Because they now appreciate the Koach HaTfilah. Because when there's an ace Sara, every and any Jew suddenly is sensitized to what Tfilah can do. The Gemara Brachas Tachamadeis tells us that after the Chedah Egel, the Kaddish Brachu tells Moshe Abeno, Herat Mimeni Ba'ashmidein, leave me alone, leave me be. I will destroy Klal Yisrael for their sins. And the Gemara says, Moshe says, Hadar Batoli be. Kaddish Baruch is telling me, leave go of me. That means it's up to me. If I don't leave go, then a Kaddish Baruch who can't destroy Kibiyahu Klal Yisrael. And immediately, Amar ben Eschazik Batzvila. If it's up to me, if the Baruch Hashem says to me, leave go of me so I can destroy them, I'm not leaving go. Omar ben Eschazik Batzvila. That saved Klal Yisrael. And there's really just two short messages I'd like to share with you this evening. The first, a story told by Rabbi Yitzchak Zilberstein of Bnei Brak about Rabbi Shai Barnaki, who was a famed Gabbai Tzedakah in the Yishuv HaYoshan Yerushalayim in the early 1800s. Rabbi Shai Barnaki came to Israel in 1821 as his boat was approaching the coast capsized. He was cast off into the water with his two young children. His wife had already previously died. The coast is in the distance. He takes his two kids on his back and starts swimming towards the shore. And he swims and he swims and he swims and he can't swim anymore. He's exhausted. His strength is sapping, is dissipating. He can't carry his two kids on his back any longer. They're all going to drown. He has the terrible, ominous choice of taking one child and not the other or else they'll all die. And so he tells one of his little two children, his young little daughter, you have to leave go, we're all going to drown. And he lets go of this little girl who starts climbing in the water. The girl starts screaming, shrieking, Abba, Abba, can't, you can't do this to me, you're my father, how can you let go of me, I'm going to die. What father can resist such a call, such a cry? Somehow some surge of adrenaline energy grabs that little girl on his back again and makes a last push for shore finally reaches the coast, he collapses of exhaustion. He then says to her, Tyra Tochter, don't ever forget what just happened. Whenever you're based Sara, you turn to your Tata and Himmel, turn to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you say, Tati, Tati, you're the only father I have. How can you let me die? How can you let go of me? No father can resist such a call. 
It's lesson number one. To so dive in with that passion, that intensity that no father can resist. The so Kaddish Baruch says, Herak memeni va'ashmidem. If you don't leave go, if you dive in with that koach atila, with that intense kavana and sense of desperation, such a tefillah cannot go unanswered. The second message to show you this evening, Hav Shem Shem Pinkas Zatzal was once approached by a young man who had been married for quite a number of years, and not yet been zochah to have any children. He wanted a bracha. And Pinkas said to him, come back late tonight. Very late tonight, come back to my office. This young man returns, it's dark, the streets are deserted, walks into Pinkus' room, and Pinkus says, come. Takes him into his car, and drives out into the dark, outside of the city limits. Stops outside some deserted woods, pitch dark, of night. Says, okay, let's get out. He walks with him, points to a log on the floor, he says, have a seat, start davening, I'll come back for you soon. Pincus leaves him there, and drives away. Comes back some time later, sees a man standing by the side of the road waiting for him, takes one look at him and says, you're not ready yet. Stay again, dive in some more, I'll come back soon. And again, drives off. Comes back some time later, again, the man's standing waiting for him. He says, you're still not ready, dive in again. Walk a little further into the woods first. And he leaves him once more. And he comes back the third time. The man's not there. He looks, he looks, he finds him a little further into the woods. Tears streak down his face. He says, okay, now you're ready. Now let's go home. And the lesson I think he was trying to teach this individual, perhaps can be summed up by the words of the Zohar, which tells us there's a tefillah l'moshe in Tehillim, there's a tefillah l'david in Tehillim, and there's a tefillah l'ani in Tehillim. And the most potent of those tefillahs, says the Zohar, is the tefillah l'ani. The ani who feels that he has no one else in the world he can turn to. The ani who feels that he's deserted and alone in an isolated, dark, middle-of-the-night woods where no one sees him and no one can help him. He has no one else to look to. And the ani turns and directs all of his frustrations, all of his sorrow, all of his pain into his tefillahs. That's the tefillah we're looking for. Tefillah l'ani. Nothing matches the intensity of the tefillah l'ani. Perhaps that is also so critical tonight. Because when Klaish was based Sarah, the most important, most critical message to bear in mind as we dive in is that we stand alone. There is no one else to turn to. The European Union tells Israel we're becoming impatient with your attacks on Gaza. The Arabs are trying to take Israel to international court to label them as war criminals. The President of the United States has praise for Mahmoud Abbas, but no praise for Ben Netanyahu and his editorial in Haaretz. We stand alone. There's no one in the world who cares about the lives of Jews living under constant threat of a rocket barrage in every and any city in Israel. And even our own Jewish designed weaponry, no matter how successful Iron Dome rocket defense systems can be, to quote the words of the Navi in Shoftim Perak Zion, can you spoil Alai Yisrael Lemor Yodi Hoshi Ali. God forbid, says the Kaddish Baruch that you Jews should ever boast and think, Kochi Votsim Yogi, that's what's going to save me. And so Gordon tells Gil when he prepares for battle with Midjan, you have 33,000 soldiers, too much, send some home. And 22,000 leave the battlefield, leaving 10,000 behind. And God says again, 22,000 left, 10,000 left. Still too much. Send some more home. And finally, says the Nami, 300 soldiers are left. The bonus says to get an ah, that's what I want. 
That's what I need to save you. 300 men is all I want. Not more. Can you spoil a lie, you saw a lame or Yadi Hoshi Ali? Too many soldiers, you'll start boasting and thinking, it's us, Koki Votum Yadi. Our ingenuity, our strategy, our skill. Khalilah Bachas, that's the most dangerous attitude to take when Khalil enters into battle. Can you spoil a lie, you saw a lame or Yadi Hoshi Ali? So we stand alone. We dive into Kaddish Baruch with that intensity and that desperation, knowing that Hadover Tawoi B, it's up to me and to my Tfilos to save Klal Yisrael. We dive into Tfilos, knowing that no one cares but a Kaddish Baruch alone. We channel that intensity, that passion, that desperation into our Tfilos. And then we ask the Kaddish Baruch to say, Bishlosh Meos Ish, Hoshia Es Yisrael. Thank you very much, Rabbi Marcus. <clears throat> We're going to ask from Rabbi Newman from Chickens for Shabbos to say a few quick words. to read to you, but it's all over the world. One of the interviews on CNN asked the leader of a Hamas, say, you don't know how to shoot a name? 300 rockets hit 90% in the open area. Then he said to her, we are aiming and more precise than ever against Israel, against Israeli cities. But their God moves it, he said. Hashem moves the missiles. Bishiz the Rabunam, the Hali Rabbi Chaim of Yishab Rafi Shalayim. You know, in this Torah, everything is in the Torah. Hafoyichba, Hafoyichba, Bakuloyba. So you have to look in the Torah, in the Gemurah, at a time like this. What does it say in the Gemurah? What do we have to do? What does a Yid have to do when there's a war? So you have to look, when there was a war, and there's man and the Gemuda, what did they do? I want to thank Yossi Ach because I went over the Gemuda with him before I said it. And he was Moscow. So he said like this, you should know David Amalek, he was Menatzech, all the wars. But in his time, people were not careful in how they spoke. They spoke one against the other. You hear? They went to war, and they died. The truth is that he won the wars, but Jews died. Now look over here. Avol doyru shalachav. Achav was also a melech in Yisrael. Hoyo oyde avoy de zoro hoyo. At the same time, they did idol worship of the three biggest of idols that a person has to give up his life for. The al yidei shaloi hoyo lehen del toiro because they were careful with their speech and they didn't hurt others with their speech. They won. You should know that the, the Koyich of Torah is the greatest Koyich in the world. But you see the efficacy of Torah, what happened with his man, but if Akiva's Talidim, he lost 24,000 Talidim. That's a very big kasha. Because the Gemuda says a principal Torah is making a matzal that a Torah is going to protect a person. The Gemuda has a habim in it when he's learning and even when he's not learning. Well, how come they didn't protect the best of Claudius' room? Because they were not careful with their speech. 
But if we'll give Hashem, Abai's kibble, our speech, then you should know that is the greatest gift that a human being can give to Hashem. The Pusik says, Hanchev Pichu Bamalayu. Shayful, I want to talk to you. Ask me. The Gemurah says, it is an unbelievable Gemurah. The Gemurah says that in the Mazman Yeshia there was a war, and I, 36 Jews died, and Hashem sells to Yeshua. You know why they died? Because somebody took from the booty. So Yeshua tells Hashem, Who took from the booty? Listen to the words of the Gemurah in Sanhedrin. Hashem says on himself, I don't speak Lushan order. I'm not telling. Many years ago, this neighbor lived, lived a year. His name was Lenny Tapp. He's a big Bakishan. On, on his son, Kalman's Bar Mitzvah, a woman stayed in my home from Flatbush. And she told me she needed a very, very big operation. So she went to the Heilige Revik de Miller's at Sal and she asked him, what should she pray for? Listen to what he told her. He told her to tell Hashem all the things that he's going to do for him. We make a kabula that we be careful and how we speak. You have no idea the power of a person's speech. The Gemurah says, He says, don't disdain the blessing of a, of a Jew. Why should a person believe that another Jew cannot bless him? Because he says, you know, I know this guy. He talks like me. The truth is, if we'll be careful, then every one of us here can give a blessing to a Yid and it'll come off. Because the commonality between a Jew, a Yid, and Hashem is the Koyach HaDibar. Basur Mamur is Dibar HaWelm, HaKosh Baruch created the world with Dibur. V'yipak Ba'apa Mishra Sur Chaim says the Targum, it's a Ruch Mamalo, which is about Dibur again. Who's speaking the Hashem and the person? So I personally, beg, I want to beg you, I beg you. You know there are so many women in Eretz Yisrael today who are begging for their husbands that they don't want to remain in Aguna. And they don't want to see their husbands come back in a wheelchair. And they don't want to hear that their husband's never coming back. Thousands, millions of Eden are going into bomb shelters. It's a very traumatic feeling. In these bomb shelters, there's not even air conditioning. There's one biscuit for, what, 25, 50 people? There's no food there. I beg you, the Gemunah said, Tzedukah Tatsal Mamuvas. We should give a lot of Tzedukah. We should give to all the yeshivas here. We should give to the Toim Shabbos here. We should give to Chazak and Shikan for Shabbos. But the greatest thing that we can give to Hashem is our Koyach of Dibur. I want to conclude the Gemurah. The Gemurah says, the Gemurah says, you know how great Torah is? So the Gemurah says, call Mukamash, Reskir Shimi, wherever you'll mention my name, give me a base kibble. You know, Hashem says, Uwe Alech, I'll come to you. I'll bless you. I'll bless you with what you need and what you want. Now we need a great Yeshia. <coughs> So, Heilig Bashef, we all got together here, we're going to make a Kabula. We're going to try better for you. And give us a Brucha that she will be Matzliach for you. Give us a Brucha, Heilig Tate, we should be Matzliach and Teure and Panuse and Chese and Shmir and Satishma, Shever Shikadisha, Brucha Vatzlucha to bring you such a Nachas that you will see in all of us and all our families. Yismach Hashem b'maas of luvad v'lenaitzach nutzuchim. Amen. Everyone that received the sheets of the Tehillim, due to the time, we're not going to be doing everything. Uh, we're going to be choosing seven of them. Uh, before uh, the Rav, Rav Steinberg will be reading them, he'll announce which parak and uh, after which we're going to be making a special announcement, so please stick around after the film.
Rabbi Peretz Steinberg, please. Please stay standing for the tale. I 
אלינו ויין קורא. Lion test, we'll say it together without the possible possible. I 
step of all the Knossim that we had, um, from the one in Orchheim till this one, Elisha Hissinger. I want to thank him from the bottom of my heart for everything. Uh, he, we're going to call him up to make a special announcement. I also want to thank Ari and Nechem the two brothers that were very involved, Ravi Newman as well, and uh, the Chazak secretaries. I saw Mrs. Bagley here and a few others. So Elisha Hissinger, please. Um, Rabbi Glatstein, who was our keynote speaker last Wednesday Shabbos at the event commemorating the memories of the three dear brothers, Naftali, Gilad, and Eyal, he approached me uh, earlier this week. He had a thought that came from his heart that he decided to put together a letter to all of the families that reads as follows. It says, to the dear families of Naftali, Gilad, and Eyal, what can we possibly say to offer you words of consolation? Only the Rabbanu Shalalem, the Bali Yeshuas of all Nachamos can fulfill, fulfill this, sac this sacred task. We can only express to you that we join in with all of Am Yisrael to mourn the tragic kidnapping and murder of Naftali, Gilad, and Eyal. Our hearts go out to you with the deepest and most sincere sympathies. Our thoughts are with you, and we shall never forget the greatest Kiddush Shemaim that was generated by your beloved sons. Hamakam and Achim Aslam Masoch Shabbat Yisim Yishalayim. May you know of no more sorrow, your brothers and sisters in Kew Garden Hills, New York. There are papers being handed out to each table. If everyone could take a moment and just sign your names, if you'd like to be joining this campaign, we're going to be sending this letter to all three families with the, with the signatures of those who join in here uh, from the community. One other quick announcement that was mentioned last month at Shabbos, just for those who may have not been there. Um, we've decided that Bez Hashem, every single month, on Erev Rosh Chodesh. We're going to be putting together a special presentation. Uh, we're going to be getting fantastic speakers, and we're inviting for the entire community to continue this achdus that's been displayed throughout. We want to make sure that it's something that continues, that we show the Rabbanu Shalom, that doesn't take a tzara to bring us together, but as is Hashem, we're going to be mechazik and tzara together in tefillah every single month on Erev Rosh Chodesh. We're going to have signs, we're going to get the word out, so everyone will be well aware um, of to, con to further commemorate the memories of these three precious souls, we should hear only Basura's Tavas together. We should have a good talk. Shkach, good luck to everyone. Just please don't forget to sign in so we can give it to the families. I think it'll be a very big Kiddush Hashem. And uh, please take CDs in the back of the previous year by Rabbi Pesach Kron regarding what we could do to make the world a better place in memory of these three boys. Uh, whoever wants to stay around, stick around and finish whatever tale that they would love, feel free. And once again, thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts for coming. Perfect.